It's Crystal, your very own personal beauty pro. Many of you know me as an actual beauty pro, a professional makeup artist in TV, print, and film, also a beauty editor and writer, and the list goes on. One of the things I've been promising for the longest is to start doing fragrance-related videos for my fellow fragrance lovers. For my beauty, makeup, and skincare girls, do not worry. Of course, I am not abandoning my profession, my passion, my art, or you. But fragrance is very much a part of a beauty routine. There's actually a lot of power and influence in the fragrances that you choose, and it can really help to complete your image. So I'll be sharing fragrance as part of my repertoire of beauty and I have a cute little name for the series when we share fragrance videos those episodes will be called on that note get it? fragrance notes a lot of people around the world adore fragrance. I think a lot of us, myself included, have rekindled our love for fragrance. Being indoors so much this past year has encouraged us to take up a lot of new hobbies and rediscover a lot of old loves and fragrance has definitely been one of them for me. So in this and future videos, I'll start to tell you a little bit about how my fragrance story has unfolded for the last year. I suspect that the fragrance industry is not one that has been struggling <laughs> this year at all. If anything, I would love to see their figures because I'm sure that business is booming. I've been up to so much I couldn't possibly squeeze it all into one video. But what I will share with you in this video is a little bit about my scent profile, a little bit about what I love so that you know who you're dealing with <laughs> when I do share my personal thoughts on fragrance. I am a gourmand girl to my heart. Gourmand runs through my veins. If it's sweet, it's not sweet enough. If a reviewer says that a fragrance was cloyingly sweet, I am like, where do I buy it? What's the name of it? <laughs> However, this year has really been a year of exploring past my love of sweet fragrances and I have really <laughs> started to like some things I would have actually despised years ago. I've even acquired some things that I used to despise years ago and would never have dreamed of wearing. So today's focus is going to be on one of those brands I have discovered this past year and that is Parfums de Marly. Parfums de Marly is a fragrance house, so that is their specialty and in the fragrance community, a lot of times you'll hear that referred to as niche. Because human nature is so elitist and so bougie, you will often hear people make a strong distinction between celebrity fragrance, designer fragrance, and niche fragrance and people often distinguish niche as being better and above the rest. From my personal perspective and also in all actuality, just because a fragrance is niche does not automatically make it of superior quality. Similarly, just because a fragrance is designer does not automatically make it inferior. Like anything, it will ultimately come to the quality of the product. Niche, while it does tend to lead a bit more expensive, is not always more expensive than designer. Designer fragrances can sometimes have a luxury price tag depending on the ingredients, the blend, the house, and so forth. As I fell down the rabbit hole that is the fragrance community on YouTube, I heard a lot of rave reviews about Parfums de Marly, one of their fragrances in particular. Before I went over the edge, I thought it might be wise to discover the house first, and thankfully they do have a discovery kit of sample. Parfum de Marley's customer service was excellent. The discovery kit comes in this little box and then the little samples are nestled inside. The box had room for five fragrances so uh, Cassili came in a separate. It also came with a really nice informational booklet which was really good because it describes the fragrances and the notes and the brand story. Now I think I should forewarn you that this is going to be interesting and maybe 
I think my thoughts are going to be different from the majority. <laughs> However, there is a plot twist at the end, so hang on in there with me. As I was going through the fragrance samples, I made sure to take notes of my very, very first thoughts so it'd be like very candid. I'm going to share it with you in the order that it actually happened. I could not wait to try the famous Delina. Delina is raved about all over the beauty community. Um, I've been hearing about it for a couple of years now. And based on the description, I thought I would love it because people were saying, oh, this is like so gorgeous and feminine and it's sweet and it's something you would wear to brunch or something you would wear to a wedding or it's a really good bridal perfume. So I'm thinking, wow, you know, if a bride would choose this for her wedding day, this has to be sensational. And it had the keyword that rang a bell for me, sweet. Several people said that as well. So I have a little bit still left in each sample, so I'll spray this to bring the memories back. Now, one thing about Delina, I will say, the quality, the sillage, the projection <laughs> is there. I just sprayed that tiny mist, and before I could bring this to my nose, it's already filling the area. My very first thought about Delina was, no. I was like, I really hope there is something in this collection that I love because Delina was an instant no. It was exactly the opposite of what I expected. Delina is kind of like, my, my initial thought with Delina, it's kind of like if you were at this five star restaurant and it was time for the dessert and they wanted to surprise you so they blindfolded you and they were like, you're about to have the best dessert you've ever had in your life. Or so you have dreams of ice cream and whipped cream or creme brulee or molten chocolate cake in your mind. And when you bite into it, you bite into a Greek salad. <laughs> that was kind of the vibe with Delena. I was expecting something rich and sweet and decadent and I got something very, it's very potent, but it's very herbal. It's deep herbal. I did get the rhubarb. There's a rhubarb note that a lot of people don't like. And that part of it, I actually do like. I like that sort of um, tangy, zesty note. But the rest of it was so unexpected, I was just distracted. I was like, this smells like a really high-end luxury herbal essences shampoo. So let me read you the notes for Delina. Delina is described as a rose woody floral which would usually X something out for me at the time that I was exploring this because I've never been a rose lover. I associate rose with a dated smell, but I've later learned that rose has quite the personality. The top notes are rhubarb and lychee. So I'm thinking I like both of those fragrances. I like the sweetness of the lychee and then I like the rhubarb note. I even like the tart sour aspect of the rhubarb. It has Turkish rose, but it also has vanilla in the heart note. Vanilla has never done anything to anyone but smell and taste delicious. And then the base notes, cashmere wood, that sounds warm and musk which can add a nice powderiness to a fragrance. So what went wrong? I don't know. I think it was the expectation of Delina versus the reality. Perhaps if I hadn't heard any reviews prior, then I may have loved it on initial spray. But one thing about Delina was undeniable and that is the quality. I am a reasonable hater. In other words, I know how to hate on one aspect of something while appreciating its good qualities. <laughs> the fragrance is clearly high quality, beautifully blended, superior ingredients. The projection, the sillage, the longevity are extraordinary. But at this point in the Delina experience, it was a no, but more on that later. So I said, well, hopefully Kassili will rescue this experience. I mean, after all, it's in that gorgeous peach bottle. 
The perfumes, the Marley bottles are just exquisitely feminine. So I hadn't given up hope. But as I missed an experienced Kassili, I am instantly giddy because I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so I didn't like Delina. Kassili's the one for me. That's okay. At least I get to experience something from Parfums to Marley. This will be the one that I get. And it's in that beautiful peach bottle. I mean, yeah, I wanted the pink bottle, but I could live with that gorgeous peach one. So as I'm smelling Kassili, I smell this creamy, peachy, sweet like I like it, feminine fragrance. But wait, there's more. There is an unexpected, stinky funeral home flower. I'm like, you have got to be kidding. You know you can't judge fragrances by first sniff or first wear, so I wore it a couple of days. Thankfully, the, the sample's pretty generous. I even wore it at bedtime, and the stinky flower persisted, and it still persists as I sit here with you today. I don't know which note that is. Cassili is described as a floral, fruity, woody. That should be yummy. Top notes, red currant. That's a nice fruity fragrance. Bulgarian rose. Hard notes, plum accord, mimosa absolute, plumeria, patalia, and base notes, sandalwood, tonka beans, which I love, and vanilla pod. So I'm not sure who the stinky floral culprit is that is ruining Cassili for me. It's like, when I say stinky, I don't know quite how to describe it. It's like a, a stinky funeral home flower. Almost like a baby wipe in a fragrance you don't like. At this point, I'm getting a little nervous, but I press on. I still have a few fragrances to go. Surely there's something in the famous Parfums de Mali that I'm going to love. Well, the next fragrance I try is Safanaz. Safanaz is described as an oriental vanillic floral. I love oriental fragrances. I love, they add this gorgeous, deep, warm sensuousness to fragrances. The top notes are orange and pear. That sounds delicious, right? The heart notes are Ylang Ylang and Orange Blossom. Ylang Ylang, I'm still not quite sure how I feel about. And then the base notes are Amber and Vanilla, which should add even more warmth and sweetness. So my thoughts on this is this smells really good. It has that sweetness you would expect from Orange and Pear. It has that rich warmth that you would expect from an oriental. It almost smells like a floral Grand Marnier, or a floral orange liqueur, which is very pretty. But for some reason, it didn't move me enough to want to own. It smells undeniably good. For Parfums de Marley investment, you should adore it. In my notes, I said that the longevity wasn't the best. It lasts about four hours. Some people don't mind respraying but my thing is, I have brought you in to work a full eight hour shift, and I expect you not to clock out early. You know, even if it should fade at the four or five hour mark, while it's on, I do expect it to have a beautiful sillage, and I do want it to have a fragrant aura about me. I like to appreciate my scents. It smells undeniably good, and yet I'm not moved. We still have about three more fragrances to try. All is not lost. Be positive. The next one up is Meliora, a joyous floral fragrance, vibrant and exciting. And it's described as a floral rose fruity. The top notes are red berries and raspberry. Doesn't that sound delicious? And then the heart is rose and ylang ylang. There's ylang ylang again. Base notes, vanilla and musk. So I'm a little sad at this point because, you know, I was hoping for the pink bottle or the peach bottle, but Meliora has a pretty clear bottle. Perhaps, you know, she'll come through. This is quite fragrant. I, um, <laughs> in my notes, I said it had low projection, but just now I, I smell it just fine. It's, it's really pretty. This is the fresh, juicy fruit. It smells like, it gives you visions of honeydew 
Although actual honeydew does not have that much of a fragrance, if it was sweetened, I imagine this is what it would smell like. It smells like a bowl of mixed melons, more so than berry, although I can smell some of the berry in there. It is sweet and yummy and pretty. The musk is a bit sensual. It's, uh, it's powdery, but not in a baby powdery way, more in a soft incense kind of way. At this point, as I was exploring the samples, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll get Melly Aura so I can say that I at least have one fragrance from the house, but that's not a good enough reason to buy a fragrance. The other thing I thought at first was that Melly Aura smells a little conservative, like it's almost a little too good as two shoes, I thought at first. This reminds me of a really polished, pretty school teacher at first. But now that I'm smelling it again, if it's a school teacher, she, it's definitely after work and she's at happy hour because that musk is a little sensual. It's adding a little sass to the fruit. We're down to two fragrances. The next one is Darcy. But Darcy has that lavish gold bottle. If it smells as good as its outfit looks, then I was here for it. Now, here's Darcy's description. The softness of white musk, the freshness of citrus, and the sensuality of patchouli for a feminine fragrance with character. I've discovered that I like fragrances with a little patchouli. This is described as a chifra fruity. The top notes are bergamot and orange. The heart is rose and jasmine, and the base is patchouli and musk. Now, Darcy is giving me a lot more than I bargained for. To me, Darcy is intense. Reminds me a little bit of Tom Ford Black Orchid and a little bit of uh, Chanel Coco Noir. It's giving me like a black licorice sweetened incense vibe. And of course, none of those notes <laughs> are what's listed. Once upon a time, I would have instantly despised this. I've grown up a little in my taste this last year. I don't automatically hate fragrances like this anymore. In fact, the reason I know it smells like black orchid is because I have black orchid and I swore I would never own that. So now I'm down to my last. And at this point, I haven't really identified one that was a must have. Our last one is Athalia. Here's her description. The iris brings an elegant floral dissonance to the composition, which contrasts with the amber accord. It's described as a woody floral. The top note is bitter orange and incense. The heart notes are orange blossom and cashmeron. And then there's that vanilla and musk in the base again. At first spray, Atalia instantly reminded me of Chanel's Coco Noir. But when I sprayed them side by side, I realized that that's not what it was reminding me of. But it kept smelling familiar and I finally figured out what it smells very close to on my skin and to my nose. It smells similar to Bond Number no. 9 Chinatown. They are not identical, but they have a similar flavor. Chinatown is sweeter and I think a bit more intense, but they both have that sort of exotic incense vibe. I get the incense instantly and it's like a, an earthy and slightly sweetened incense. It's very grown up, very sensual. This smells more formal to me. Definitely a fitted dress and stiletto kind of fragrance to me. So at this point in the Parfums de Marley adventure, I'm feeling quite disappointed and honestly a wee bit betrayed. I mean, the hundred thousand recommendations I got for Delina couldn't possibly all be wrong, could they? Mind you, I'm not really blaming anyone for me not liking Delina initially. I really think it was the descriptions. It is a challenging fragrance to describe. Everyone's gonna have their own personal experience. Fragrance is very individual and it is quite possible to not like something that 
a majority of people seem to love. It happens with me often in um, makeup as well. I am in the minority of people that don't like something. And again, it wasn't the quality that was in question at all. It just wasn't what I was expecting. So I was thinking, oh well, I guess I will move on to trying to discover the next perfume house. But I thought to myself, I'm going to give this whole Parfum Somali thing one more round of research and that Delina fragrance in particular and I want to see if anyone else had a similar experience to me and sure enough I found someone who had a very similar experience to mine and long story short she said that she did discover that she liked Delina exclusive and thus it was on. But there was an interesting plot twist in that research on Delena Exclusive. Somehow when it was all said and done, I somehow ended up with all three Delenas. How did that happen? What's the story behind them? What do I think about them? And above all, how did I end up with the original Delena you might ask? I will give you the full story in another video. But on that note, I'll see you next time. I know, I know oh, oh. that I just met